Hey guys, Miss Miklos here with the start of chapter four. And chapter four is really building off of what we learned last chapter. Instead of two by two systems, this chapter we're working on three by three systems. So that means we're going to have three equations with three variables. So what that means for our solutions, our solutions this time, instead of being an ordered pair, are going to be an ordered triple. So we have x, y, and then we have this third variable, z. And what this actually means, this means that we are in 3D, and I drew a picture where we have our x-axis and our y-axis, and then we have our z-axis. So things can be placed in space. If you think about this in the classroom, if you can picture my classroom right now, it is like the wall up on the front, and actually I'll write this in, it's like this is the front wall, and this is the side wall that I write your assignments are, and this is just the corner. And so what we can do with this, we can take any point in the room, a desk, my desk, which is like back here, um, the table, which is right here, and we can give an ordered triple to it, and it's going to tell us its location in space. Now, the good news is we are skipping graphing in three dimensions, okay? We're not going to deal with that at all. And we're going to move straight into solving algebraically. So, when we are solving algebraically, um, the first method that we are really going to talk about here is linear combination. We can also use substitution. I personally think linear combination is easier for three by threes. And our goal is to eliminate a variable so that we have a two by two system to solve because we know how to solve two by two systems really well. So here's our first example. 3x plus 2y plus 4z equals 11. 2x minus y plus 3z equals 4. 5x minus 3y plus 5z equals negative 1. So in order to make this easier to work with, I'm going to label these equation number one, equation number two, and equation number three. That way when we're talking about it, it's easier to just reference it in that way. Looking at these, I think the easiest thing to do is to cancel out the y. And the reason why I think that is because looking at these y values, I notice I have one y term that has a coefficient of negative 1, which makes it really easy to make opposites with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at equation 1 and equation 2. And I need to figure out what would I need to do to cancel these out. So we already have a positive 2, so I'm going to think, what would I multiply to get a negative 2 there? And I'm going to multiply this entire equation by 2. So when I do this, I get 4x minus 2y plus 6z is equal to 8. So I'm going to combine these, and I get 7x, my y's cancel each other out, plus 10z is equal to 19. So now I have successfully made it so I have one equation that has two different variables. However, we know that in order to solve, I need to have two equations with two variables because I do not know how to solve this alone. We used equations one and two previously, so I have options. I can either use one and three or I can use two and three. Remember, my goal here is to cancel out the y because that's what I got rid of in this first equation. Since we have this coefficient of negative 1, I think using 2 and 3 would be the easiest. So, after I write out these two equations, I need to figure out what coefficient do I want y to have in order for these to be opposites. And since this is a negative 3, I want this to be a positive 3. So I'm going to multiply this entire equation by negative 3. So when I distribute to everything, I get negative 6x plus 3y minus 9z equals 12. So I'm going to go ahead and combine these, 
and I get negative x, my y's cancel each other out, minus 4z is equal to negative 13. So at this point, I've successfully made this into a system that has two variables and two equations. Last chapter, we learned four different ways that we could go about solving this. We can use substitution, linear combination, graphing, or Kramer's rule. And it does not matter which method you choose to use. Saying that this overall method is linear combination just refers to our original equations and canceling out one of the variables. So, it doesn't matter from this step where we go. I'm actually going to look at these. I think substitution would be easy. I think linear combination would be easy. And I think Kramer's rule would be equally easy. But I think I'm going to go ahead and use Kramer's rule. So, I'm going to go ahead and write this on the next slide and just rewrite out these two different equations. So I've rewritten out my system of equations here. And as I said, I'm going to use linear combination and I'm going to cancel out these x's. So I want this to be negative 7x, so I'm going to multiply this entire equation by 7. So when I do that, I get negative 7x minus 28z equals negative 91. So I'm going to go ahead and combine these. My x's cancel, and I get negative 18z is equal to negative 72. When I divide both sides by negative 18, z is equal to 4. So when I start writing my order triple, I'm going to write 4 as our z coordinate. Now, I know z, but I need to figure out what x and y is still. So I'm going to use one of these two equations that we've created. And it doesn't matter which one we use. I'm going to use that second one. And I'm going to go ahead and substitute 4 in for z. So this is just like what we did last chapter. When I do this, I get negative x minus 16 equals negative 13. So negative x is equal to 3, and x is equal to negative 3. So I know that negative 3 is the x value of my ordered triple. Now, in order to figure out the y value, I'm going to have to go back and use one of my original equations that had three variables, and I'm going to substitute both x and z into that equation to solve for our unknown value for y. So I'm just going to use our first equation, and I'm substituting negative 3 in for x. We do not know what y is, so I'm going to erase that value there. So that's just going to stay 2y. And for z, I'm substituting in 4. So I get negative 9 plus 2y plus 16 equals 11. When I combine my like terms, I get 7 plus 2y equals 11. So 2y is equal to 4, and y is equal to 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write 2 as our y coordinate. Now, if this was a test and I absolutely wanted to make sure I got this question correct, I would take this order triple and substitute it in for x, y, and z in all three original equations. Now the thing that I want to stress about these problems, our new math that we're doing really isn't that new. It's kind of building off of what we learned last chapter. However, there are just a lot of little places that I can make algebraic mistakes. So it's very important that we are taking our time as we go through problems. In fact, we're just going to go through one more example. If you think that you feel good on this concept right now, then you can stop watching because um, we're not going to learn anything new. We're just going to do one additional example on this. Just so you are aware, in this chapter, we are only going to focus on 3x3 three three systems that intersect at a point or I should say add an ordered triple. 
We're not going to go through any that have no solution or anything like that. So you don't need to stress about those this chapter. So here we go, example number two. <clears throat> I think the Y's would be easy, but I'm going to focus on canceling out the Z's this time. So once again, I'm going to label these equation one, equation two, and equation three. So the first thing that I'm going to do is work with equation number one and equation number three because when I write these out, when we look at them, my z's are already opposites. So 5x plus 4y minus z equals 3. So I can just combine these right away and I get 7x plus 7y, my z's cancel out, equals 14. Next, I'm going to do equation number two and equation number three. So equation number two was 4x minus y plus 2z equals 1. And I have 5x plus 4y minus z equals 3. I know that I want my y's, I'm sorry, I want my z's to cancel out again. So I'm going to need this z to be a negative 2. So that means that I'm going to multiply, let me fix that x, this entire thing by just 2. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite out that first equation. And when I distribute 2, I get 10x plus 8y minus 2z equals 6. So I'm going to go ahead and combine these together. And I get 14x plus 7y is equal to 7. So right now, I have two equations that have two variables. So I'm actually going to take this one and move it over here and rewrite it underneath. So 14x plus 7y equals 7. Looking at these two equations, I'm going to go ahead and use linear combination. I'm going to cancel out the y's. So I'm going to multiply this whole first equation by negative 1, and I'm just going to write it down below here. So I would get negative 7x minus 7y equals negative 14. So when I combine these, I get 7x equals negative 7, so x is equal to negative 1. Now I need to substitute back in to figure out my y value. So I'm going to substitute back into this first equation. So I'm going to do 7 times negative 1 plus 7y equals 14. Negative 7 plus 7y equals 14. So 7y is 21 and y equals 3. Lastly, I need to find my z value. So I'm just going to use this first equation. And I get 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 3 plus z equals 11. So negative 2 plus 9 plus z equals 11. So I have 7 plus z equals 11. So z is equal to 4. And I'm going to go ahead and check this one. Let's see if it works. Negative 2 plus 9 is 7. 7 plus 4 is 11. So that one works. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7, plus 8 is 1. That works. Negative 5 plus 12 is 7, minus 4 is equal to 3. So they all work. Okay, so the biggest caution I have for you guys, take your time, check your work.